In this A3 tube, I'm going to talk about why the impedance of a circuit changes with frequency. So let's take a simple circuit, which we encounter quite regularly, in, whether it be in a printed circuit board or in some form of transmission system. And when I say transmission system, this could be telecommunications or it could be power. But we take a, a load, a, a purely resistive, lo a, a resistive load down here, and we have something that resembles a transmission line, a long pair of wires. Uh, these could be twisted pair where we have two wires that are twisted together or that are used for most telecommunication circuits. Or it could be a power system where this could be a phase wire and this could be a neutral wire. Now this is an idealized system and at this stage, and we're not going to look, worry too much about what the supply is because that's not part of the, the situation we have. But what we do know is that our circuits are not ideal. This is not a pure resistor. Um, and if I, I, we'll argument, we'll call it 60 ohm, 600 ohms. Okay? Now, it is not purely 600 ohms. Very few impedances are purely resistive. You'll often find that it has a small amount of inductance. Okay, so here's a little bit of inductance. And for argument's sake, we're going to call it 1 millihenry. Okay, so it's got quite a small amount of inductance. Now the other important thing to note is that this transmission line, or it could be two uh, printed circuit tracks that run parallel to each other, it is effectively a capacitor. Recall that a capacitor is our plates of our capacitance And the capacitance is a function of the area of these plates and the distance apart and the dielectric material that exists within here. Now, this transmission line is effectively a capacitor. Here we have one plate, here we have another plate, we have a distance between them and we have some form of dielectric material in here. So we can modify our up until now idealized circuit with some form of realistic representation of this capacitance. Yeah. And again, for the purposes of this, I'm going to pick a number and I'm just going to call it one picofarad. Okay, so it's, it's a very low capacitance. So coming back to the subject now, why does this the impedance of this circuit change with different frequencies? And it all comes down to a very simple plot which, if you keep in mind, will stand you in good stead. And that simple plot goes like this. On this axis, we have frequency. On this axis, we have an impedance. Now, the resistance does not change with frequency. It is a constant. Whatever it is, it's a constant. So we can label it as that. We know that the inductive reactance does change with frequency. And it is a linear relationship. And that relationship is expressed by the equation 2 pi fl. So here we have the value of 2, which doesn't change, the value of pi, which again doesn't change, the frequency, which does, and our inductance, which doesn't. So our inductive reactance is directly proportional to our change in frequency. The other important thing to consider is this relationship here which is our capacitive reactance. And the expression for capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 pi Fc. So we can see here, again, the value of 2 doesn't change, the value of pi doesn't change, the value of our capacitance doesn't change. What does change? Our value of frequency, which is inversely proportional to our capacitive reactance. And here we have this expression here. So if we bear this in mind, we will then find out why the impedance changes. So let's put some numbers to this for those, for those of you who are, are numerically orientated. Let's say, for example, this is going to be a, we'll work with two frequencies. We'll call F1, we'll call that 50 hertz, and we'll call F2 arguably 1 megahertz. So we now have a low frequency that operates in most power systems and a higher frequency up in the telecommunications spectrum. 
So we can go through and we can calculate these impedances and see what's going on there. So first of all, if we take the, this capacity here at 50 Hz, Xc at 50 equals 1 over 2 pi Fc, which is 1 over 2 pi, our frequency is 1 times 10 to the 6, times our capacitance, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 12. If you solve that, you will get an answer that's round about 3,183 ohms. Okay. Similarly, our capacitive reactance at 1 megahertz, 1 over 2 pi Fc, will give us an answer that is around about 159 ohms. If we now look at our inductive reactants at 50 ohms, 2 pi times 50 times 1 millihenry gives us an answer of 0 0.31 ohms. Our inductive reactance at 1 megahertz, 2 pi FL, will give us an answer of around about 6,283 ohms. Now these numbers don't really mean that much for a lot of people until we start to look at the total impedance of the circuit now. So, if we come down here and look at what has been our load, we know that the low, the impedance is R plus JXL. So, at 50 Hz, our impedance is our 600 ohms, plus our inductive reactance at 50 Hz, which we calculated to be 0.3 ohms. This is equivalent in polar form. If we can do a rectangular polar conversion on that, we end up with something that's close enough, allowing for a little bit of rounding to be there. So that is our impedance. So the end result here is at 50 hertz, this impedance here our inductive reactance is negligible. It makes almost no difference. Now, if we look at what's happening with our capacitor, we see that at 50 Hz, our capacitive reactance is 3000 ohms. So our equivalent circuit here could be drawn as something like this. impedance here is 600 ohms and our impedance from our equivalent capacitance is 3183. If we now look at our situation at 1 megahertz, our impedance is still R plus JXL, which is 600 ohms plus 1 megahertz. Now we've got a big difference. Our impedance at our 1 megahertz frequency here is significantly higher because of our, that very small inductance. We've gone from being down here, and we're now up here. This rearranging this here into a polar form gives us 6311.5 at an angle of 84. Our equivalent circuit, 
with exactly the same values of R and C now looks like this. Now load 6311 with an angle of 84 and our capacitance at 1 picofarad capacity here at 1 megahertz it's got an impedance of 159 ohms. So we can see here that with the exact same value of capacitor, the exact same value of resistance, and the exact same value of inductance, that the impedances of our circuit have changed significantly. We have gone from having this at 50 hertz, where our low, much lower impedance path is through our load, with a very high impedance between, well, a moderately high impedance between our transmission line or our circuit boards, the tracks on our circuit board, once we start getting up in telecommunications frequency, our circuit's characteristic has changed immensely. We now have a low impedance path between our transmission line or the tracks on our circuit board, and it's a high impedance path through our load. So most of our signal is going to not be dissipated into our load, but is rather going to come down this way. This is all because of this graph up here. As we move up the frequency thing, our impedances change significantly. Our circuits behave quite differently at different frequencies. If you can keep this equation in mind and this expression, it will go a long way towards helping you understand what's happening with circuit boards, what's happening in telecommunication systems, and why sometimes a circuit works perfectly well in the kilohertz frequencies, but it doesn't work in the megahertz frequencies, or even possibly higher. Thanks for watching.